Hey y'all, welcome to Kamir's Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious and very easy oxtail stew and also some white cheddar grits to pair with it that is so delicious. Now you guys know that I think oxtails cost too darn much, right? But I said, you know what? I just got paid, <laughs> okay, and it's Friday night. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I can make these oxtails. Now I'm going to remove them from the package and I'm going to put them in a bowl because oxtails very much need to be cleaned. Like look at that. Ooh, mm -mm -mm. People who say they don't clean that meat. I mean, look, you know, you can't just stick that right up in the stew pot. Mm -mm. So we're going to take these to the sink and I'm going to clean them very well. First, give them a good rinse and then I'm going in with the juice of one lime. I'm going to squeeze it over and I'm going to actually scrub the oxtails. You need to work that lime in just a little bit to remove any debris or anything that is caught in there. I find that oxtail tends to be very fatty, so I like to trim off any of these yellow looking bits and also any of the excess fat. Because there's so much fat in the oxtail, if you don't trim it well, you will have a lot of oil on the top of your beef. If you actually like that fat, then I suppose you could leave it, but I think that a lot of it can actually go because it's going to just be rendered out. So I chop this with some kitchen scissors and then I am going to rinse it one last time, drain it to make sure all the blood and anything is out and then we're going to pat it dry. If you don't pat it dry, the seasonings aren't going to stick well. Now I tried to simplify the seasonings for you all because I've had a, quite a few people ask me to cut down the ingredients list a little bit and I've tried y'all. So I have some rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, and allspice. I'm using my salt-free Cajun because that's going to take the place of onion powder, garlic powder, and a couple of the herbs plus thyme, pepper, and mustache. I have three tablespoons of my green seasoning mix. That's a mixture of like onion and scotch bonnet, some fresh garlic and things like that. Um, one tablespoon of Maggi seasoning, but you could also just use a little bit of soy sauce. Some W sauce or, you know what, let's say it today, some Worcestershire sauce. Okay, <laughs> did I say it right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have a little bit of seasoning salt. And to help me cut down on the seasonings, I've used this Spice King beef stew and oxtail this already has your beef bouillon this has a lot of other spices in it a little bit of instant coffee some paprika y'all this was a very good spice blend this is the first time i had used this and you can get this at walmart and also food lion so i think you should grab this some saison tropical and i also use some brownie to start off with my seasonings, I'm going to go in with the green seasoning first because that has a little bit of oil in it. So that's going to help the seasoning stick. Then my dry seasonings, I'm going to throw that right on there and then just continue to season it as usual. Now, the first time I made oxtails, I was actually a teenager and my mom was letting me play around in the kitchen a little bit. And so she let me get some. And of course, back then, oxtails was cheap. So I was looking online to learn how to make these taste good and YouTube won't pop in. So I was just kind of going by these blogs. Guys, these oxtails came out so bland. I could not figure out what it was I was missing. And I'm telling you guys that using something that has like a beef bouillon, those little Maggie seasonings or that soy sauce, the Worcestershire sauce, all of that really is the key to getting that umami flavor into your oxtails. And nobody was telling you back then, okay? And YouTube wasn't popping, so I couldn't watch anyone cook. <laughs> but guys, I'm telling you all the secrets today. And thank God for my family being so gracious because they have eaten more than one under seasoned, not flavored right meal while I was learning how to cook. If you have a mama or a daddy that lets you play around in the kitchen when you were young, let tell me about them in the comment section. Now guys, I am going to chop up uh, my onion. I'm using the whole onion, some red bell pepper, and this is not spicy. Of course, if you do like spice, you can throw in a scotch bonnet, scotch bonnet but I didn't today. And I'm also going to chop up some carrots and some spring onion. Now I'm gonna reserve most of these other than the onion for the end of the cooking time. I don't want them to turn to mush. I like them to have a little bit of texture. So we're not gonna put these in until about the last 25 minutes. Thank you. 
Now, if you have enjoyed this recipe so far and you feel like this is giving you value, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I upload every week. My recipes are delicious and they are super easy, but they are full of bold flavors. Your family will always have something new that you can cook. Now in a heavy bottom skillet, I am adding in my oxtails and I put some olive oil on the bottom to help them round just a little bit because remember these things got a lot of fat. You're going to let this cook on high heat for about 10 to 15 minutes until you get the browning. I'm going to flip them continuously so that I can get the sides to get all nice and brown. And this is where you get that flavor action coming in. You're building a nice bond on the bottom of your skillet and that is going to start releasing the oils that are in the spices and help develop a good caramelization and a good color. Once I have a good color on my oxtail, I'm going to put in just my onions because I want those to start cooking. Don't throw in that garlic though, okay, because that garlic is going to burn. And put in about half of a cup of your favorite dry red wine to start to deglaze the pan of all those lovely spices. And you're just going to go around and sort of scrape everything off the bottom of the pan. Look, don't be one of those people that cleans your pan after you do things like this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are throwing away the flavor, okay? I'm adding in about a teaspoon and a half of tomato paste and then all of my oxtails are going to get all nice and cozy together and at this point I throw in my garlic and because I didn't want it to burn and then I'm putting in the bay leaf, the rosemary and the thyme. Fill up your marination bowl with water and just pour all of that water in in order to get all the flavoring out of that bowl. Okay, we ain't leaving no spice behind. And I'm going to cover this on about medium high because I want it to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you can reduce the heat to a simmer and let it cook for about two hours. So this is two hours into the process. My oxtails are softer but they're certainly not fall off the bone level now i know at some point for some people at about two two and a half hours they are coming off the bone but for me it just isn't okay so i will go in with about two more cups of boiling water because you don't want to mess up the temperature in your pan and i let this cook for about another two hours my oxtails took about a total of four and a half hours to get fall off the bone. Of course, if you have thinner or smaller oxtails, they are going to cook significantly faster. And I actually make oxtails most of the time in my Instant Pot. So if you'd like to see that recipe, please let me know in the comments. So now we're going to add in our fresh ingredients. Now you should not add this in until about the last 25 minutes of the cooking time because you want them to maintain some freshness. They're going to bring a bright flavor to your oxtails, especially since um, there's a lot of deep umami flavors that have been released and that have been cooking. Adding this nice freshness near the end is going to pick up the flavor in your stew. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. At this point, you really can taste it for seasoning and it just needs a little bit. And I'm going to put in about one cup of water just to help it cook down because the carrot absorbed a little bit of the water while it was cooking. I'm going to cook this covered, still on low, for about 25 minutes. Now while this is going, this is when I'm going to have the opportunity to cook my white cheddar grits. I think this is a perfect pair with this dish because it cooks very quickly and also that cheesy flavor just is a beautiful complement to the richness of these oxtails. But of course, you can pair this with my Instant Pot rice and peas and that recipe will be linked for you. After 25 minutes, our carrots are nice and tender. And as you can see, this meat is literally falling off of the bone. It is so tender and delicious. And I'm gonna teach you all a secret to making some lump free grits. Now I have some chicken broth and water and milk going and I am going to put in the grits right before the water starts boiling. If you put your grits in at this point, you're not going to get lumps because the lumps tend to come when you try to put it in in boiling water and it's cooking quicker than you can whisk out the lumps. Put on the cover and let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until your grits are tender. And as you can see, there are no lumps in my grits and I have not had to continuously stir it and I didn't get lumps at all. So let's go ahead and season this. So I'm going to be using about two tablespoons of salted butter. This is some Kerrygold butter because the flavor is very rich in that butter. I'm also using about a fourth of a cup 
of heavy cream to make it very nice and creamy and tender and a perfect complement to those oxtails. And of course, you can salt and pepper to your own taste. Today I'm using white pepper because I want the grits to stay sort of a bright color. And I'm also gonna be using a little extra chicken bouillon. Mix this all in and then add in about four ounces of white cheddar cheese. This, I cut it into cubes because it was just gonna melt anyway. And it took about two or three minutes for all of this to melt and become nice and tasty. Of course, season to your own taste. Now look at these beautiful oxtails. They are tender, they are delicious. And I'm serving this up with these lovely grits. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this recipe today. If you did, please let me know in the comments and give me a like. God bless you all and know that I pray for you and think about you. And I hope you join me next time in Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye.